Thank you kindly. Eleven. You look around the room, Ward. Nothing really pops out at you. That being said, like, you get the feeling it might be a bit more, it's, it's a bit obvious, you know, like things that would, with the exception of the ghosts, you know, the Wraith Knight people, you know, that as a sole exception, most other beings that you've encountered in this place thus far have like some crystal growth on them. And you see that in this room, there's no crystals at all. Like, the place still has a red glow, but that's just from the water. And yes, the water does glow. Consider it bioluminescent or something, but it does just have an ambient glow to it. I don't know, sorry, it speaks to the menacing aspect of it, but... Yeah, you don't see any crystals, crystal beings, crystal monsters, anything like that. So, nothing really catches your eye. You're still a bit... You're still wondering about that one ghost that ran away. But you're content with 12 of you now. You guys will be fine. So yeah, you know, no such danger. Alrighty, no Lake Placid giant crystal crocodile. God, that would be great. That'd be some darkest dungeon shit. Hell yeah! Oh fuck, no, I don't want to play. Yeah, the mosquito crocodile fucker. Yeah, I went in there with like an arbalist and just got fucking destroyed. (laughs) He killed two of my people. The first time I it. Look, you're going with a flagellant. Well, the thing is, they nerfed him like after the first day, <laughs> and I was like, "Wow." I always got him with like nice. the the hound, and they were like a decent combo. But yeah, no, he was definitely a weak sh- weak point. He did get a lot of fucking criticals, so I named him Deadshot. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So, yeah, you guys, I'm seeing, or Sandra, you don't know whether or not this is natural or not. Uh. Yeah, and then Ward, you don't see anything menacing. I mean, considering the no, environment no. we're in, I doubt many things in here could be considered natural in the first place, so... Her confusion at it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Aminius, wise, anything you guys want to do, or are you guys just content to sort of keep an eye out? Yeah, just... Drying yourself off. Keeping an eye chilling. Yeah, I guess Drying. So. Chillin. Nevi goes up to each of you guys in turn and asks if anyone needs any healing or if you guys are alright and stuff like that. I mean, a little bit extra wouldn't hurt. Haha, <laughs> Nevi's healing is way better than Varric's because she has an extra dice. Hey. But she does have healing advantage, so that sort of sucks. Yeah, it bounces. Oh, out. well. Well, she also has proficiency bonus to her. <laughs> so, yeah, her, yeah, it's better. It's better. It's just better. Heal for 21. Thank you, thank you. I'm only missing 7 HP. Sound just gives the okay hand of, I'm all good. Oh, accidentally overhealed. Oh, uh, no. Okay. Uh, Wrong <laughs> class, the overheal would have been nice. I know. It's <laughs> like <laughs> so going to 8 8 being like, wait a second. You guys wrap up your cursory well cursory in some aspects deeper investigation another look around the room and well unless any of you guys want to venture the guess of there's an exit in the water which those of you that are in the water didn't see shit there's only one way to go well where does the water drain out to in here Do you look around for it? Hmm? Do you look around for it? Like an exit? Or like a drain, rather? Or do you just ask that to the group? That's Garth's curiosity? I'm trying to determine which one of them... I'm gonna say Sandra would be questioning that and attempts to... <laughs> attempt I would, to not I would say it. as Shadowbear, you have been in underground scenarios. Like, there's a lot yeah. of ice caverns in Northrend. As you remember with the... Um... <laughs> right. God, what the fuck was the name? Shisuba. Oh, yeah, that whole shit. Ah, oh, that was fun. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, like... Like, you've been in underground scenarios. Maybe not ground, ground, ice, but... There's some terrain. Gotcha, gotcha. What I'm saying. So it's not like this is unfamiliar territory for you. Uh, so could I roll something for her, then? Sure. What would it... I'm guessing nature. Nature again, yeah. Pop and pop. Much better than the oh, other yeah. one. 
as you look around in the water itself, you do see what would operate as a drain. Maybe not necessarily is like it's not a physical. Uh, it's not like a hole in the ground that it drains out, like a normal lake would maybe have, or it would have spill off thus forming like another river or a stream or something like that. Yeah, obviously this doesn't. What you do see instead are sit at the very bottom, so it's a bit hard to make out. Uh, you still can see it because of the light, the glowing rock there. Are a bunch of roots, like a tangle of them. Mm -hmm. The differences of these roots, however, as opposed to the ones that you guys might have seen coming in or jutting out in like town or something like that and like wilderness around town. Right. These ones have like a large crack in them or crackling to them, which sort of reveal the, uh, I guess it's called the, the, it would be the flesh of the tree, one might call it. Oh, thirsty. The bark. Yeah, it cracks through the bark and everything like that. Right. And you can see the red interior of the tree. That thing is drinking a lot of water. <laughs> Hmm. Sorry. What was the joke? What was the joke? Redwood. Ha! <laughs> so yeah, that's what you figure is drinking the water. Yeah, considering how much water is going in, it's drinking a shitload. <laughs> or it might just be, you know, continuously going in and out. Mm. Like a heart. Yeah. That's only... You ponder the, you ponder the notions. Yeah. That's only exceptionally concerning, but not much we can do about it. If I was a gambling man, I would wager we are meant to go that way. Sounds like a safe enough bet. That was Aldrich that said that, right? 100%. Yes, yeah. it was, yes. yes. <laughs> Are you not a gambling man? <laughs> <laughs> it's a term of phrase, Marshall. <laughs> Uh, so he's like sort of throwing shade, but it's like innocently throwing it, so it's like not intended to be shade. Anyways, so you guys regroup and set up. <laughs> Might I ask your guys in the marching order? Oh, joy. You guys have all the tokens Yeah. Uh, top is. Well, as always, top is front. Top is key. Okay, how about you guys? Okay, let me get rid of I was just moving my guys to, like, a spot that, like, I can move them later. Let me move this stuff first. Can I move? Yeah, I can move them in tandem. Alright. She'd be... Technically, it'd be smarter to have Marshall in the back, because he's got dick all for perception. <laughs> <laughs> and Chedmir is in the front because she has the big dick of perception. Oh, actually, yeah, I've got like twenty. Now I think about it. Last press pass. Yeah, but you also probably shouldn't put the wizard. Yeah, yeah, I'll just go like middle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cavern is ten feet wide, as all the caverns have been up until this point. I'm actually big to move there. Damn you, Garth. You can go there, it's fine. Nah, it's fine. Okay, fine. It's mine now. And then wizard number two. Where's the minions in this? Um I'll I'm just put... middle of the wall. Range people, some guys that could go back if they need to. Double Fred in front. <laughs> a rainbow. It's like a rainbow. Whoa. Twice the Fred, the double the sorcerer. Did you say the slightly <laughs> leading up has counted as a short rest? Uh, it's already had a short rest, like probably. To when like when we began session, that's why we were doing all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. I already refilled your superiority dice and probably use them for rallying. 
and stuff like that. Oh, you oh you mean like right now another short? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah I would I say mean, I with like how, how you use the system. No, I'd say with like if you didn't do anything, I'd say yeah, because like you just probably spent a Dump bit of time. Quit. You just probably spent a bit of time looking around, at least like five minutes. Long enough to get a few wins. I'm like, who are my favorite people? <laughs> I would imagine the Noxalis crew. I would say, like, most of the Vanguard crew has Nebby. Nebby. I Yikes. Ugh, Nebby doesn't I mean... need it. She has, like, three legendary resistances. Uh, Mira? Okay. Uh, I, I, I guess, uh, uh, does Mira have it? No, Abigail. Uh, Abigail does not have it. Nira does not have it. Be fitting for her to get five. Mira? It would be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wait, was it eight for? It was for Abigail, right? Uh, Abigail then Mira. So Abigail five. Mira eight. Abigail's always the lowest. It just happens that way. It's a yeah. weird coincidence. It's, it's very. It's very fitting. It's very fitting. Initiative. Oh wait, it won't be advantage. Okay, so, uh, yeah, uh, stick in the marching order, real quick. There is a uh, passive perception mod that you can add to something, isn't there? In a clog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to find where it is. I'll be mumbling it's at the bottom. Stuff. Give me a second. It's at the bottom where all the skill options are. It's at the lower. Oh, okay. Thank you. I remember it quite well. Because a lot of people end up getting fucking observant or alert or a sentinel shot. <laughs> so. Can you tell why I was looking for it? <laughs> yeah, I know. I figured. Yeah. So. You guys press on board in this marching order. Praying to the gods above that the other side doesn't have fireball. Or lightning bolt. Or any other. Any other uh, thing that can areas. just right destroy us. Yep. As you guys leave the cavern, the sounds of running water fade away. The scent of citrus dilutes out. And it's a bit more, a bit less rather noxious. Still present, but less noxious. Uh. <sighs> I'm assuming someone has a light spell going, because as you guys go deeper into this, there's no crystals. No crystals or anything like that, so actually, you guys actually do lose lighting. Yeah, that one. yeah I know I know someone, I know multiple people. Why is the saying something about it? Seema's got it. Wouldn't be surprised if Marshall yeah. has well, that's it from what I'm wondering, like, where the, My biggest question is where the light poison is. So I'm wondering mm. if someone in the front, back, and middle has it. And there's front, uh, why is his middle, and then Abigail can cast it on the back. Yeah, I have my uh, long sword. But... Oh yeah, that's right. You have your also illuminating, illuminated long sword. So yeah, you guys have light. So you guys are fine. Um, this hits Ward. I shouldn't say hits. That's a real. It gets noted by uh, Ward and Aldrich first, fittingly so because they're in front. Uh, that being said, doubly fitting so because more so in Ward's case, maybe less so in Aldrich's case, you both have a rough familiarity with the scent of well, what I'm about to describe. It smells of food. Fine cuisine. Well, maybe not fine. That fine fine foods don't usually smell that, <laughs> that impressively. Rustic cuisine, we'll say. The scent eventually gets the rest of you. And it sort of cuts through, almost mm, wiping away the sort of citrus odor that has been so prevalent throughout the cavern thus far. It is a, maybe not so literal, maybe semi-literally, a breath of fresh air down here in the dark. No more of this, you know, overbearing citrus scent. Instead, you smell things like well, to the Vanguard crew, you're a bit more familiar with uh, rustic fare. You know, things like fried chicken, stuff like that. You know, Just the greasy pastas. stuff. Yeah, stuff breakfast that. Burritos. Breakfast burritos. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Bacon, stuff like that. Again, this is basically. It smells of food that is not so. 
you don't need too much mise en place. You know, you don't need too much preparation to just start cooking it. Like most, like a lot of fine cuisine would be. This is stuff that, you know, check in the fryer, check it over the fire, and then it's done. Ah, so Chattanooga's version of fancy food. <laughs> yes, Chattanooga's version of fancy food, yes. <laughs> you can smell to it all the scent of spices, assorted spices. It's warming. Not only to, you know, a morale sense, but to the soul itself, really. So, you guys continue forward, and the place itself begins getting illuminated, and you guys hear this tune. To the Noxalis crew, this is a peculiar tune in the middle of a weird dungeon. But to the Vanguard crew, you guys have heard this tune before, although no one's singing to it this time. You guys pull up into this. You guys can see the glow of the illumination before you see the point sort of curves around the corner. But you guys go around it. Cautious, wary. Those of you in the Vanguard crew remembering you guys are still in the Fey Wilds, even though the Noxalis crew doesn't know that. So, doubly cautious. But, you turn around the corner and you're greeted by a long table decorated with Cla- like a tablecloth, like nothing particularly decorative, more over just something to just chuck over the table as opposed to like, just leaving it open. And the table itself is filled with assorted fares. Again, rustic food, comfort foods, and it has a bunch of candelabras which have candles lit upon them, so they're giving this... Mm, it's a bit familiar to some of you. Aesthetic to it. And you see there's adorning around the sides of it, multiple chairs, nothing particularly fancy, no thrones or nothing like that, but, you know, things with armrests and stuff like that. And sitting in one of these, her legs kicked up on the table itself, playing a lute, is just this woman. Wait a moment. Are we fighting a bard? <laughs> it's a bit confusing. Uh, to Noxalis, you guys have seen this person before. This specific iteration of it. <laughs> Nevi seems to recognize this person immediately as she sort of dashes and begins talking to them in Nevros, which I'll get to the dialogue in a second. But how does this woman look? She wears traveler's clothing, you know, a vest or a bit of a mix of a vest and a corset, a traveler's scarf. A bard's, you know, sort of flaunty, like, uh, shirt. Close to the fitting, uh, close to the leg fitting pants. You know, something like a cool one for, like, writer's pants. So you don't have it, like, flapping around and stuff like that, getting mud on it. You know? Boots that go, not to, not boots. Shoes that go around to the ankle. Uh, a French braid to adorn her black hair. Golden eyes. A gentle smile on her face constantly. Uh, if you wonder what a French, no, I, I don't I worry, I got you. <laughs> I got you. Nope, I got you. I had, I have this all prepared, all prepared. So that's what roughly Ooh, it would that's... look like. It's a black hair. Point of loop. Uh, who here understands Nevros? Ward. I know a good number. Chet a good man. number of you two. Yeah. Chet, I mean, I will kind of does. <laughs> Okay. I'll give you the dialogue in Nevros itself. Because I actually do have the language, roughly. The very base foundations of it. And I'll give you the translation thereof. So, Nevi immediately rushes past you guys and excitedly, enthusiastically just says, Shari Khan! To which this woman, looking up, still playing a little, not missing a, not skipping a beat, just keeps playing. <laughs> Nevi! Fase? Nevi, you know, goes over to them, gives them a hug around the back, not interrupting the loot playing at all. And, you know, she continues, or she continues the conversation. Destos sosos. Ki es very? Destose, destose. And then she breaks the conversation out of Nevros. Ah, but this conversation should be had in common, shouldn't it? Nevro's translation, Nevi asks, or exclaims, Jarek Kane. 
Jedi Khan is the Nevros title for Jericane, which is just, again, Jericane's name. In a different iteration. Uh, Fase is in a shortened way of saying, how are you? Or how are you doing? So Fase Nevi, how are you doing, Nevi? Destu Sosos. Destu is, I am. Sosos is, it's not, it's no, no, technically, but it sort of, Sos translates to bad. So it's not bad. I'm okay. Stuff like that. Not bad. Uh, is Fleri and you. Is Fleri is you. And simple as that. Just to say, I'm good. And then obviously the rest of the conversations are common. Yeah, there's a lot of confusion on certain, certain ah, aspects. JC, always a pleasure. Oh, it's good to see you again. I'm taking a shot and... in the dark that we're not going to be fighting them. <laughs> I swear onto my power that this space here is a sanctuary. Come, join me around. And she gestures to the table, pausing for a moment, her loop play, and then going right back to it. Ulbrich sort of grabs the seat with mage hand, kicks off, puts his boots <laughs> on the table, grabs something to eat. Sandra's just gonna kind of go with it because they seem extremely comfortable with this person in an extremely weird situation. Yeah, just like sit down somewhere at the table. Abigail and Varric like whisper to one another, but they eventually sit down. I'll be in a sort of distant position from J.C. Jedic Kane. Any chance to like or overhear I that conversation? Roll, roll perception. Um. To you, Noxaz, you guys know this specific iteration of Jarek Kane. This, not disguise, but just a different version, variant. Uh, she goes by Jana, Jana Seri. That's how she first introduced herself to you guys. Yeah, you don't really hear. It's frantic. It's a bit concerned and confused, but they. It's like it's like. Akin to like a couple whispering about who's gonna pay the bill, you know, it's like it gets solved. Some back and forth, some frantic concern stuff, like no, 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 no. does it but seem it like solved. it's resolved in a way that makes them happy or no? By them sitting way far away from this person, I don't think they have a choice. Mm -hmm. Kind of solved. Yeah. Yeah. You guys, I'm assuming, speak now or forever hold your peace. Take seats. Yeah, I'll just. Yeah. Ward will or look something. for assorted vegetables to see if any are on the table. Oh no, plenty. There's a straight. There's literally like a couple cornucopias, sort of. Thing itself. Thing itself. Marshall sits and eats. Eats a lot. <laughs> I should probably. Say. Oh, no. You probably just grab like. It's like instead of grabbing like a plate and helping yourself to bits and pieces, you probably grab what would be your whatever is the closest thing to your favorite. Fair, and then just grabbing the whole plate and then grabbing stuff from other plates. There is alcohol here in the forms of fine wines, harder, there's more gentle and gradual uh, meads and ales and stuff like that. It's really uh, Dior's choice. There's some soup here too, chili, stuff like that. Basically, whatever you so desire. You guys are content in the quiet moment of stuffing your food, or stuffing your maws of food and stuff like that. So, let me begin getting to the effects of this, shall I? Nothing bad, I assure you. So, first off, may all of you mark upon your sheets inspiration. Given divinely. I'm sure those inspirations will come in very, very handy. Soon enough. Additionally. Where is it? Ah, there it is. Additionally. <laughs> up to 12 other creatures. Can how, how perfectly exact? 12. Whoa. So, 
first off, any creature that consumes this of this feast is cured of any and all diseases and poison. They become immune to poison, the poison effect, I'm assuming. Well, poison damage and poison effect, as well as being frightened. It instills in you a sense of courage. You make all wisdom saving throws with advantage. And additionally, and I'll roll right now, you increase your maximum HP by 2d10 and gain that equivalent amount of health. These benefits last for 24 hours. So may all of you... <laughs> uh, that's not divine at all. Here. Not it's my game. Yeah, that's not much better. This is great. We'll take a meeting then. 5.5. Increase your health by 11. Mark down what your original health is, but nonetheless, you know, increase your current health and your max HP by 11. Does it go into temporary health if it's not full? Already full, sorry? No, this is a uh, new This increases your max maximum. HP. Oh, oh, okay, got you. This is the spell Hero's Feast. It's a six level conjuration spell that normally only clerics get their hand on. Clerics and druids. So it's advantage on wisdom saves, immune to poison and disease. And frightened. Here. And frightened, yeah. that's what it is. And then max health plus 11. Okay. Shut hey, that I'll down. be like back in five minutes, just changing location. Yeah. Have fun. You also have to deal with Skid Apparently. <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> Hi, Oprah. And you get max HP. And you get max HP. Additionally, so normally the spell takes an hour. You have to consume it for an hour. That is. And then it disappears after that time. It will disappear, don't get me wrong, but uh, it does not take. You guys do not have to consume it for an hour. You guys don't have to sit here for an hour. You guys probably stay here for like 20, 30 minutes, stuffing your gauze and stuff like that. Additionally, additionally, you may now benefit from the effects of a long rest. <gasps> Hell yeah. <laughs> so yeah, recover. I'm going to use that man explosion. Indeed. Oh, I'm right. Aww. Recover half of your total hit dice, which rounded up, so it should be five. If you, and then obviously it doesn't go over maximum. Spell slots get reset. Abilities get reset. For you, Aminius, <gasps> your important rolls and your pocket ace get reset. Oh my dear God. I have a weird question. Would Chedmer be able to rework the poisons she had for into potions instead during this time? Yeah, it's a long rest, so yes. Okay. I didn't know, because like, it's a long rest at the length of a short rest, Ooh. so it was just throwing it off. Oh, you got the first and the last for your pocket ace. Big numbers. These port and rolls are piss. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to take the three and the five. Okay. So, first off, for the pocket ace, you have the fool. You have... Oh, you already had the world before. I will say you get it again, why not? Fun that one. You have the okay. world. And, uh, roll it again, because you already had the hero point. You just had the hero point, so. Roll another 22. D22. Nine, which is actually eight, which you're a had. Roll again. Ah, not, not, fuck it, we'll, we'll give that too. So you, we'll take the strength card, why not? It'll be very fitting for the story. You have the fool, the world, and strength. You become much yeah, of man, man, savage. Of cards here, damn, cool. I can get my luckies back too, yeah. Yeah, you get your luckies back, yes.
Anything else you want to throw at us? Nope, that's it. Okay. So all of you get an inspiration, all of you benefit from the benefits of a long rest, and you guys have the benefits. Does the spell normally give you inspiration? No. 